Okay, well sometimes the equations that we want to solve look a little bit more complicated and actually a little bit more threatening. Uh, let me show you one that I think fits the bill here. Imagine that we have 3 divided by x plus 2, and that equals 5 divided by 2x minus 7. And I want to find out what value of x, what's the th number I should plug in here to make that thing balanced, to make these two things equal. Well, this scares the heck out of me. I don't know about you, because the variables are, are underneath, and so, you know, how do you, how do you deal with that, and what do you do, and I don't know. It's sort of scary. So, so one thing that I could do, though, is since I have these two fractions that are equal, what I could do is say, well, okay, if these two fractions are equal, then if I multiply through by something, I'm not going to change the value. And, and here's my thinking. My thinking is, at the end of the day, I'm going to want something that looks like this. This is going to be the happy situation, right? x equals, and then stuff here. So I'm going to want x not only alone, but I'm going to want x on top. And so all these x's on the bottom, they're just not making me happy, because I want the x's on top. So how do I get the x's on top? Well, the way I can get them on top is to just say, OK, let me multiply through by something to get the x's out of the bottom. So for example, what I could do is multiply both sides by the same thing, so it won't change the value of the equal sign. I can multiply both sides by, let's say, x plus 2. What if I did that? If I multiplied this by x plus 2, look what would happen. I would have an x plus 2 on the top and an x plus 2 on the bottom, and so those actually would cancel out because x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is just a fancy way of saying 1. So I could cancel those out, and then I would have an x plus 2 on this side that would be on the top as well. So that sort of gets rid of the x plus 2 here. Unfortunately, I still have all that junk there. But at least I'm making some progress. So let's try that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides of this by x plus 2. Now, I'm writing it small, but you should think of it as being very big. x plus 2 here. And then on this side, I'm going to multiply this by x plus 2. So here, they actually cancel out. Because if I have something and I divide by the same thing, well, those just cancel out and produce a 1. So all I have on this side now is a 3. Well, that's pretty good. And here I see a 5 times x plus 2. And I divide all that by this 2x minus 7. Now, I made a major mistake here that I want to call to your attention. When I multiply this 5 by the x plus 2, that 5 has to hit every single person here. And so in fact, I've got to put parentheses around this. I've got to put parentheses around this so that in fact, I know that the 5 not only has to multiply through by the x, but also has to multiply through all the way to the 2. OK, well, look, I'm making some progress because now notice that all of a sudden, there's uh, an x on the top. There's still x on the bottom, though. So what can I do? Well, I can just recycle a good idea. That's what we do in mathematics. The good mathematician is the lazy mathematician. So what I'm going to do is recycle this idea, multiply both sides by the same thing so it doesn't change the value. And what value should I pick? I should pick this denominator, 2x minus 7, so they cancel on this side. So I'm going to now take both sides of the equation and multiply it by 2x minus 7. And I'm going to do that on this side, too. 2x minus 7. And notice I'm putting in parentheses again, because that 3 has to hit every single person there, not just the 7. OK, well, now what happens? Well, now what happens, notice, is that I can cancel this entire bottom with this top thing, which is exactly the point. And what am I left with? I'm left with this 3 times that. I'm going to write that in front, I think. 3 times 2x minus 7. And that equals 5 times x plus 2. So I did a lot of work, and I don't even have the answer yet. Remember, our fantasy is to say this. And now all I'm saying is this. Am I making any progress at all? Always good to ask. I mean, are we moving forward, or are we losing ground? Well, actually, we are making a lot of progress, because the original question, which is still up here, had all the variables in the denominator. Now, I did a lot of work, I admit, but now all the variables are happily on top. There's no denominators. And so now I can start to actually try to get the x all alone and isolate the x. Now, by the way, there's a neat trick to see how, of what I just did here, which might actually be easier for you when you think about this on your own. And I want to show it to you before I actually finish this problem. And that is, when you have a fraction equal to another fraction just like this, what you can do is sometimes what's called cross-multiply. And if you cross-multiply, what you do is you take this times that 
And you can set it equal to this times this. If you notice, that's exactly what we finally got here after all our work. Look, 3 times 2x minus 7 equals 5 times x plus 2. So this is a trick that's called cross multiplying. Only works when you have one fraction equal to another fraction. Then you can cross multiply and set this thing, if you multiply those two things together, you can set that equal to this thing because they'd still be the same. So that's an easy way of actually getting to this step without doing all this extra multiplying through. Anyway, this is where we are right now. This was the original question. We now want to solve this, but that's actually an easier problem. So let me rewrite that up here. That's 3 times 2x minus 7 equals 5 times x plus 2. So that's where we reduced our original hard problem, and now we want to solve that. OK, well, the first step in this problem now, in this solution, is to distribute to get rid of those parentheses. Those parentheses just mean that you have to multiply 3 by every single person here. So if I do that, I would see a 6x minus, and 3 times 7 is about 21. Are you good at multiplication? Because I stink at it, by the way, just to let you know. But I'll do the best I can, and, and you should do the same. Uh, this would be a 5x, and when I distribute, I'd see a plus 10. I happen to know what 5 times 2 is. I'm good at that. OK. It's like the 7 times 8 that really eludes me. It's like 50, the 54, 56, I never know. OK. Now, now I've gotten this back to something that you know, we, we can easily solve, because the idea is I want to get all the x's together and all the other th stuff on the other side. So what I want to do is take this and bring it to the other side in a way. But to bring it to the other side, I have to subtract it. Another way of thinking about it is subtracting the 5x from both sides so it cancels here and it'll appear here as the, as the other sign. Or you can just visualize it in your mind's eye, taking this and subtracting it over. If I subtract it over, I would have a 6x, then a minus 5x would just be x alone. So I would have this. And since I brought that over, I would just have the 10. And now, of course, I want x alone. Unfortunately, I have x minus 21. So I want to take this negative 21 and bring it to the other side, which would require me to add 21 to both sides to keep this thing even. Or another way of thinking about it is just bringing this over to the other side, but switching the sign and adding now. And I would see x equals 10 plus 21, which would be 31. So the answer is x equals 31. Who would have guessed it? If you look back to this original problem, which maybe you can't even see because we've done so much work to it. The original problem was way over here. That was the original equation we were given. And the question is, what's the one x value, the one x value out of the infinity of numbers that there are? What's the one x value that will make this thing true? It turns out the answer, 31. And you can check it by just plugging in a 31 into here and a 31 into here and seeing that this number is the same as that number. I'm not going to do that because that's requiring me to use 31s, and I don't even want to do that. But anyway, you could check and see that, in fact, these two things are really equal. OK, well, now armed with that, let's try another one. 3x over x plus 4 equals 2 minus 12 over x plus 4. OK, now you might say, hey, I'm going to use that idea of cross multiplying that I talked about a second ago. But you can't here. You can only cross multiply when you have one fraction equals one fraction. Here, I've got a whole bunch of things. I've got a 2 minus a fraction. So actually, that trick is not going to quite cut it here. It won't work quite correctly. So instead, let me just multiply through by something that would clear off these denominators. And in this case, it's easy to see that if I multiply both sides by x plus 4, if I had a factor of it way over here, it would cancel with this one. If I had a factor of it way over here, it would cancel with this one. So I'm going to multiply everything through by x plus 4. If I do that, I'm going to see x plus 4 times 3x over x plus 4. And on this side, I'm going to have x plus 4 times 2 minus 12 over x plus 4. OK? Now, OK, now why, by the way, let me, ask, let me ask you this question here. Do you notice that I put parentheses around everything? Because I have to make sure that everything touches everything else. OK? So I haven't changed the value of anything because I did it to both sides. So this thing remains perfectly balanced. They were equal before, 
right? Our job is to find out the x, which makes these things equal. So we're, they're equal now. And by doing this, they remain equal. Okay. But now, notice, I've got an x plus 4 on the top and an x plus 4 on the entire bottom. So they actually cancel out. And on this side, I just have 3x. So that's really easy. That's a good side. This side, actually, is going to be a little bit trickier. The first thing we have to notice is that this whole thing has to be multiplied through by each of these terms, this term and this term. Okay. So if I distribute now, what do I get? Well, I see x plus 4 times 2, and then a minus, and then an x plus 4 times 12 over x plus 4. So it looks pretty complicated on this side. This side looks so good. But notice there is a cancellation happily. The x plus 4 is a multiple of the top. And it's also on the bottom. I can cancel those away. Well, this is great, because now what does this give me? This side, I still have the 3x. I'm not going to touch that. Let me now distribute this, this 2 everywhere. The parentheses means I have to distribute. So if I distribute, I can get rid of the parentheses. So I'd have a 2x, 2 times x, plus 2 times 4, which is 8. Minus, and these have gone away, I'm just left with that 12. Well, now I can actually solve this quite nicely, because I want to take that 2x and have it go to the other side, which requires me to subtract it, or subtract 2x on both sides, bring this over as a negative 2x. 3x minus 2x is just x alone. And what do I have on this side? That's gone. I have an 8 minus 12, which is negative 4. So the answer is negative 4. Can we check it? Sure. In fact, let's just check this one really fast, just to show you what it looks like if you check something. So if you want to check your work, just take negative 4, plug it into this side, plug it into that side, make sure those two things balance. So I plug in negative 4 here for x. I'd see 3 times negative 4, which would be negative 12. What I see here, negative 4 plus 4, uh-oh, that's 0. This is a problem because uh, you can't divide by 0. You cannot divide by 0. And in fact, notice what happens if you plug in the negative 4 on this side. You have a 0 in the denominator, too. Uh-oh, this actually cannot be a solution because we can't have a 0 there. So what went wrong? Well, what went wrong was that when you're solving an equation that has denominators, for those things to balance, the x's you plug in have to make this number equal that number. But that pre-assumes pre that, in fact, they're numbers. When you do all the work and you get to an answer, you have to plug back and make sure that that produces an actual real answer. In this case, when I plug in the negative 4, even though all our work is correct, by the way, it turns out that that forces a 0 to be in the denominator, which is not allowed. You cannot divide by 0. So in fact, even though it looks like, oh, the answer is negative 4, we should go on our merry way, it turns out it's not. In fact, this has no solution. There is no value for x that you could plug in here that would make these things balance out. Pick any number you want, these things would never be equal. The only possible candidate is going to be negative 4, but that fails because I have 0 in both the denominators. So the moral of the story is, whenever you have equations that have denominators, you should always check your answers. Always check, not only to make sure that your arithmetic is correct, but also to make sure that you don't have some sort of degeneracy going on where you're producing a 0 in the denominator. You see, by the way, the reason why that went away was when I multiplied through by the x plus 4, you see, then I cancel these things away. OK, that's fine. But I'm actually not allowed to do that if the number is 0. So the once I did that, I went on my happy way, and I got to this answer. All the steps are correct. Nothing is wrong. But the problem is that we have to make sure that we're not dividing by 0. In this case, we were. So it's scary stuff, but nothing to worry about. All you have to do is make sure that when you have denominators, when you get answers, always plug back to make sure those denominators don't become 0. If they do, then in fact, this thing is not answerable. So this has no solutions. Isn't that sad? No solutions. It's also sort of fun because you may think that every equation can be solved, but some equations just can't be. Anyway, a little bit of care and a little bit of algebra and arithmetic, and you're home free.